Hey guys, I'm Jake with Senka Sen. We're picking up back on that bending series. Today, talking about features that are near bend lines. So let's start by talking about a couple components that are in the CNC brake to better understand the situation. First of all, we have three main components. We have the punch, the die, and the back gauge. The back gauge essentially just gets us a spot that we put the material up against that not only orientates the part in an angle, but also in the depth representation with respect to the punch and your center line of your bend. Next, we have a punch that sits above the part and the die sits below it. So as our part sits on this die, the punch will come down. And as I got a punch in my hand here, the punch will come down and make contact with that part, forcing it down into the die. So let's take a look at the die real quick before we get further in this situation. So there's a lot of different flavors of dies also, right? So we have different angles, there's different widths in which it contacts the part. And so when we're looking at that, let's talk about those contact points. So we have three main contact points, not really including this back gauge. We have one here, one here, and one at the punch. So when you guys get your parts in the mail that are being bent, you're gonna end up seeing a witness mark which are often referred to as die marks. As this punch comes down and presses this in, this material is gonna start bending and we're gonna end up folding the material down into this pocket here. So we're gonna have a little radius there, right? Because we don't have square corners in our bends. Sorry for the terrible drawing there. So as that punch comes down and forces it in there, it's not gonna actually push that uh, material all the way down to the bottom of the die. Um, at, here at Senka Sen, we don't do coining. So coining is the operation in which the punch and the die make full, it shoves the material fully into the die, applying pressure there and forming a bend. Uh, if it doesn't go to the bottom and we have a gap right here, it's called air bending. And that's what you're gonna see here. So lastly, anything that falls in between those contact points that are within the die is liable to see some kind of distortion during the bending process. So if we have a hole set in this area, say a tapped hole, most likely it's gonna be affected by distortion and not work exactly like you wanted it to. We did make it easy for you guys again. If you go to our design considerations on the website, you're gonna see some safe distances that you can place features such as holes away from the bend line. Next, let's talk about a feature that we can put into the design that will actually help with the bending process, specifically relief notches. So if we have, say a bent part like this one right here, that we have a base flange and two return flanges being at 90 degrees to each other. What if we don't put in a relief in this area, we're gonna see bulging in the corner at the intersection of those two bend lines. And that's because as we're stretching that material, it's gotta go somewhere and it ends up pushing it into a point. So one quick trick we can do is by putting in essentially a circle that is centered at those, that axis between the two bend lines and that circle's radius, or the bend relief, is gonna end up being this equation right here. We're gonna take the bend radius, which you can find on the bend calculator, the material thickness that you're using, and then add about 20 thousandths is our personal preference. You're gonna end up putting that in here. That's gonna give you a circle. You can end up finishing your flanges off, and as that gets bent up, you're gonna have a nice, clean bend on both of those. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more.